I'm annoyed with you for being so damn good, John. Oh, That's what. Good. That's great. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, John Five, good the to see one, you. the only. So we're going to talk a bit about what he does, why he does, and then why he does it. And then more importantly, he's going to show us how he does some of his cool tricks. And yeah. we just saw a little glimpse of it there. So let's start from the very beginning. Yes. You started at an early age. How early and why? Um, <clears throat> I remember it vividly. I was watching Hee Haw and uh, <laughs> loved Hee Haw because it was what, like we just, what we watched. And that's the reason I played Telecaster because they were all like, you know, like... Uh, <clears throat> You know that kind of stuff and I, that's why I played telly is, and I, I was like obsessed but then I saw this kid this little kid playing banjo and he had to be probably I don't know 12 and he was like doing that kind of stuff and I was like oh wow this this kid is so little and he's just ripping this stuff and that's what made me want to play guitar but I swear to you Nick this is so funny and I was so young but I <laughs> I knew that guys weren't really girls didn't really dig guys playing banjo because I always <laughs> saw them with guitars and I was like well I guess you know I should play guitar. So you play banjo on guitar, basically. Yeah, so it's I can really play great. banjo licks on the guitar. But it's really good. Uh. <laughs> but you've managed to incorporate that, that successfully in some pretty hard driving stuff. What what makes you get that weird meld of stuff? Because your influences include Eddie, Randy, Kiss, yeah. Mal, Mr. Malmsteen, and then the Chet Atkins, the Django's, the banjo stuff. Yeah, what, I don't... How did you meld all that together? Because it's pretty... Eclectic, for want of a better word, but it works. Uh, you know, I hope it works, but I, I, uh, I just love sitting at home and doing. I love doing that stuff, but I was like, well, how can I put that in in rock stuff? But we'll be playing a show, we'll be playing a concert, we'll be really heavy, and then I'll be like. <laughs> but people like it, you know? No. People like it. So Make it's, shade, my friend. Make yeah. Shade. It's like a little juxtapose, I guess. You know, that kind of cool stuff. Those kind of cool licks. Yeah, in a minute we're going to do another video that's him playing a few licks for us to steal, that you can steal, hopefully, and I'm going to learn. That's, and then, that's right. No, I'm going to have you show them then. I'll scrap you and I'll pretend I wrote them and teach them to people. And they I, won't I believe a word. No. That'll be great. The thing that fascinates me about you is if we look at your history, you've worked with Mr. Halford, you've yeah. worked with Mr. Roth, you've worked with Mr. Manson, you're now with Mr. Zombie, th four of the hardest hitting front men in hard rock. Yeah. But when you go further back, you've, I was at your house last year, you have a Rod Stewart platinum album That's because right. you wrote a single for Rod. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, I love Rod Stewart and of course, you know, we all love Rod Stewart and I love all this. I just am such a fan of music, but I got a chance to write, uh, you know, a song for Rod, and it was just, and just to be on the record, it was amazing. But it was a single. I know. And it was his, uh, it was his highest selling record since um, what Maggie May or something? Like Atlantic Crossing or something wow. crazy, you know. Wow. Like, so I was like really proud of it, and uh, really psyched to have that to have that uh, platinum record on the wall. Yeah. His wall is fascinating because you, it's a history of. He's worked with, I'm going to embarrass you now, Katie Lang, Wilson Phillips, Salt and Pepper, Leonard Skinner, yeah. Paul Stanley, yeah. Ace Frehley, you're on Ace Frehley's record as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And most impressive of all though, of everyone he's played with in my opinion, he's associated with the Hoff because you did some Baywatch stuff as well. That's you? right, yeah, I did, I did a little bit of everything like Ricky Martin and all. The Ricky Martin session was, uh, everybody was speaking Spanish, but you know, everything is, it's like just music. And that's what's so cool. You can just go in and just play music and it's its all good. And how did all this fall into place? Were you, were you in the right place, right time, or did you just work really hard and? I, I think it was um, in the very, very, very beginning, I would do sessions, but I would do it for half of the pay of everybody else. So if, if there was a guy like a guitar session, and I don't care who you are, everybody wants to save money. 
and I would do it for, I would say, oh, how much does this guy charge? And I would do it for half of the price. And then I would do it really fast because they want to get the guitar stuff out of the way. And uh, so I never stopped working, you know, because I was always getting work because they're like, hey, there's this dummy doing it for half of the price and for <laughs> half of the time. So I was always, I was always working. So be a dummy, literally. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Making it in guitar by being a dummy. That's right. And it works, look. Do it, do it cheaper than everybody else and uh, it worked. And your chops, what does it take just to maintain your level? I mean, how many hours do you have to put in a day, seriously? Well, I don't really, you know, I'm, whenever I'm doing something and it's, it's, it's crazy. Like if you follow me on Instagram, I'm always, always, always playing. So I, I don't even know. It goes from like, I wake up, here's what I do. I wake up in the morning and I will play and I'll play until the afternoon and then I'll eat lunch and then I'll play some more until I have to go, you know, pick up my son or do something like that. But I'm always, always, always playing guitar. And, uh, you know, it's you, just what I do. Do you play do. anything particular or you just mess around? Just noodle? Um, you set yourself I'm goals? usually like writing or I'll try to do like different stuff. just come up with stuff and I'll just play and I'll write you know music all the time because writing instrumental stuff is it's not it's not easy no no it's not <laughs> who influences you nowadays we know some of your early influences from the monkeys and kiss through Van Halen and all of the country guys we've mentioned and including Django Reinhardt is there anyone more recently you've listened to who impresses you or uh, inspires you anything out of the ordinary luckily now we have YouTube and we have Instagram so I'll see like someone <laughs> people doing that and I'm like oh that's rad you know let me learn that so uh, anything I can to, that's a little different I'm gonna switch to a distortion and then, uh, anything like out of the order. Kind of stuff that's different, you know. And how did you come up with the? That there was just one very effective thing you did by just ramming the string down into the pickup. How did you discover that? Just you know, I'll around? be watching TV and then I'll just like just always have a guitar. And I'll just be like, that's really cool. So I'll be like. That, that kind of weird stuff, or like tap and step. Oh yeah, the, the broken computer noise, yeah. that's brilliant. Anything out of the ordinary is fun, because it will catch your ear, you know, just a little bit. So I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna finish with one question. If there would be a lot of people watching, including myself, going, I wanna do that. What would your advice be to someone who'd like to follow in your footsteps, or at least some of them? Well, like, like a simple thing, just to make a cool noise, you can have your, um, on the uh, rhythm pickup and just take your pick and scratch it down the string or it goes up but it has such a cool sound to it on the rhythm pickup but if you're on this pickup and you do it it doesn't really sound that cool but for some reason it has a really cool tone that way well, I've never done that so yeah you can do it in anything Or, um, so you can create anything from it. Or like uh, weird uh, s string bends, like if you're in G. Cool. So bending and catching the string with so the So bending and catching it with, the, with your finger. So one's going up, one's going down. Pretty weird. But it's cool neat. though. Yeah. It creates that weird dissonant clashing. Yeah. <laughs> it works, you know? <laughs> so, 
what we've learned here is be a dummy, be dedicated, yeah. and you will be this man. And watch TV and watch use, a, yeah. use a Charlie's Angels guitar pick. That's all you oh, We've got to do. show people this. John is playing through this, by the way. This is what everything's coming from. Yeah. So this, that straight into this, pretty amazing. Yeah, so. you don't, you don't need, uh, you don't need, um, you know, any expensive amps. You know, I don't know how much this costs, but it was. Uh, you don't need anything to just, just to do some, just to do some playing. And you can. It's a fine sound. with an amp and a little not even plugged in just a cord uh batteries i think it is yeah you're right and a charlie's angels pick ladies yeah and gentlemen. that's right you gotta have that. john thank you we will be back with three or four licks from this man thank Appreciate you it, my friend thank you can you play us out yeah sure uh let's see 